Section 1.8, absolute value equations and inequalities. So what we're going to do in this segment is we're going to, as the title reads, we're going to try to solve absolute value equations first, followed by inequalities. Now, just to remind the idea of absolute value, when we say absolute value of a number like seven, we're looking at the distance of that number away from zero, right? So seven, here you go, here's zero and there's seven. So as you go from zero to seven, the distance measures seven units. Now, if you go left seven units, true, we went left, but as far as movement, we moved seven units on the left. So absolute value of negative seven is also seven. Notice the answer to absolute value must be positive because we don't care about direction. We simply care about the magnitude, the size of the number. Okay. So in general, absolute value of X is going to equal to just X itself. That's the case where, for example, I have absolute value of eight is eight. So my X is eight. You see that? Or what if it's a negative number? So for instance, if I have absolute value of negative eight, this time X is negative eight. Well, if I just say X again, that means I have to write negative eight. But we just said absolute value cannot be negative, right? So in order to force this to be eight, notice they're opposite in sign, inside absolute value and outside. Well, it's gonna be the same thing here. They're gonna be opposite in sign, inside and outside. So absolute value of X therefore is X, provided X is greater or equal to zero. But if we know the value inside absolute value of negative, uh, we make it negative of X for numbers that are less than zero. Okay. Now, our task in this section is to rewrite in order to solve absolute value equations. We want to rewrite these equations so they do not include absolute values. So we're going to look at several cases. For instance, let's say I have absolute value of X equals K. Okay, now what is K here? Let's say we're going to let K be positive. So for example, suppose I have absolute value of X is equal to 10. That's K. K is 10 and is positive. Well, based on what we just observed, in the beginning, I said absolute value of seven is seven. Also negative seven is seven. Well, that means what's inside the absolute value, the X could be 10 or negative 10, couldn't it? Because both of those in absolute are 10. So there is a solution to the simple absolute value equation. So what I'm going to do here, therefore, I'm going to write the absolute value of X equal K means X must be K or X must be negative K. And this is my way of rewriting and trying to get the absolute value out of that uh, X out of the absolute value. That's what I like to do. And I, and we just did. So the key to doing this is to translate them into an equivalent expression, which I have in the box. So if I do absolute value of X equal 10, the way I just did it, I'm going to write X is 10 or X is negative 10. And there are the two solutions, just like the one I had here by inspection. Great. So that's case one. There you go. We're going to put a circle on that, <clears throat> on that bullet. Now the next, uh, possibility here, by the way, oh, special case, let's do special case here. The special case is, well, what if K is negative? So for example, absolute value of X equal negative five. Remember by definition, the answer to absolute value must be positive. So this is false regardless of what's inside the absolute value. What makes it false is the negative sign. Therefore, by inspection, absolute value of X equals K. If we know K is negative, this one has no solution. That is again, the special case of what we just saw. 
So for all expressions that have something inside the absolute value equal to a K, we translate them this way. Now the X, by the way, the X that's inside here, let me just say X inside absolute value itself may be an algebraic expression. Could be anything. It doesn't have to be X. So for example, I could have 2X minus 7. Because that's not just x this is an expression in x equal to five okay and we can solve it this way in fact let me solve the example i just made up absolute value of 2x minus 7 equals 5. so remember by definition what's inside the absolute value must be k or negative k in this case 2x minus 7 must be 5 or 2x minus 7 may be negative 5. In absolute, they're both 5. And then we solve. We end up solving a linear equation, simple linear equation. Add 7, divide by 2. We get one solution. Or add 7, divided by 2. So there are two solutions to this one. The solution set is going to be 1, 6. And there we have it. So here's a case again where we just solved an absolute value equation. And again, special case always has a solution that is no solution. Okay. Now, what if we have another case? The other case here is if I have absolute value of X equal absolute value of Y. In other words, we have absolute value equation where there are absolute values on both sides. Now, if there are absolute values on both sides here, here's how we translate them. X could be Y or X could be negative Y. In other words, what's in here, they could be opposite of each other. For instance, I could have negative six equals six, absolute value of six, see they're opposite inside. Or this could be six, the other one could be negative six. What if they're, can they be both positive? Of course. Can they both be negative? Of course. So there are four possible permutations of plus minus sixes that will make this correct. Now the case where you have uh, these two are same sign, for instance, same sign. There you go. And this one. Both of these cases, notice the number on the left is the same as the number on the right. So x equal y actually picks up these two possibilities. Or number on the left is opposite of the number on the right. Number on the left, opposite of number on the right. These two instances are picked up by the next expression. Therefore, we've covered all possibilities of plus minuses by doing this. Now, so how are we going to translate again an absolute value equation where there's absolute value on both sides you're looking at it and this is the translation of the absolute value on both sides of the equation again when you have absolute value on both sides of the equation this is how we translate them <coughs> now uh, let's take a look at an example of this one an example of this one, I'm just going to make, for instance, let's say I have absolute value of x plus 1 equals absolute value of 2x minus 5. And we want to solve this inequality, uh, this equation, absolute value equation. And then how, how are we going to do this one? We're just going to translate them outside of the absolute value. We don't add, subtract, multiply, divide by anything. We translate these into another form of an equation without the absolute value. So I'm going to write again, both of them have the same sign. That's the case where x plus 1 equals 2x minus 5. So it looks like you just dropped the absolute value. Or we have a case where what's on the left is equal to opposite of what is on the right. Now notice, I can say, well, um, what's on the right is that, and on the left I have opposite of what's on the right. So I could put the negative on x plus 1 on the left, but these are the same. 
If you multiply both sides of the top one by negative, you get the bottom. If you multiply both sides of the bottom one by negative, you get the top. And the same thing with this one. This is a case where they're both the same. They could be both the same positive or both the same negative, right? But then you multiply both sides of the top by negative, you get the bottom. Both sides of the bottom by negative, you get the top part. So that's, that's what this one becomes. And uh, for that reason, I'm just going to work the top one. So I'm going to go simply, uh, I'm going to do the x plus 1 equals 2x minus 5. And on the other side, I have x plus 1 equal negative of 2x minus 5. Now, for the, on the left, the equation on the left, to isolate x, I'm just going to subtract x from both sides here. So I'm going to get x minus 5, and then add 5 to both sides. That will make it 6. Or, to the right, first we need to remove uh, parentheses. We're going to do distribution. Distributive property, we get negative 2x plus 10. Then I'm going to add 2x to both sides. Makes it 3x on the left. And let's subtract 1 from both sides. That will make it 9 on the right side and then divide by 3. That will make it x equals 3. All right, and there we have the solution set. The solution is made up of 3 and 6. So please keep in mind, when you do this, which is just dropping the absolute value, that's half the equation. Okay, and we have the solution to the equation, not half the equation. But it's half of the solution to the equation, the first possibility, this one we also have the second possibility so you got to remember to do both parts of that in order to do this correctly in the case where we have absolute value on both sides and that's uh, pretty much all in case of absolute value equations you either have an absolute value and a number on the right side positive negative whichever or you have two absolute values the next case we're going to look at are absolute value inequalities. Now, absolute value inequality, uh, case one, we're going to look at the case where we have something like absolute value of x less than k, and again, k is positive. For example, absolute value of x is less than uh, 10. Now, again, when we think about things that's x things or values that are less than 10 units away from zero here's zero well i'm gonna have parentheses at 10 because 10 itself is exactly equal to and by the way these inequalities in just like before if i have what we're doing works with less than greater than less than or equal greater than or equal the concept does not change the specifics change whether you have parentheses brackets that's really all and whether you you're to the right or to the left of a number but our process the translation doesn't change so i'm looking at the absolute value of x uh, in this case less than and let me then let me again clarify what i'm doing here works for these two instances so in other words whether it's less than or equal or less than you do it this way for greater than or equal that would be another case let me write that these are not the same okay and assume k is positive for this one let's say we have absolute value of x is greater than 10. so now we're looking at different numbers this time whether it's to the right or to the left of 10. But what I mean is that if you have greater than, greater than, equal, the process will be the same process. The difference whether you include 10 or exclude 10, that's it. All right, so for the first one, less than 10. So the distance from 0 to 10, anything that's within 10 units of 0 on the positive side would work, wouldn't it? 1 works, 2 works, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Well, not 10, but 9.999 works. And remember, it doesn't have to be whole numbers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I could have square root of 2. That works. I could have 3 quarters. That works. I could have 2 and 3 quarters. That works. 
but for us it's easier to imagine just whole numbers now on the negative side numbers up to negative 10 should work right so for example negative 5 well negative 5 is 5 units away from 0 so that should work we want within 10 units away from 0 we don't care about direction right or left so one thing that helps me personally is when I see this less than I translate that as all values that are within k units of zero so change that less than to within the word within so i'm looking at see within means between really and that's what that would be and therefore the solution to absolute value of x less than 10 is going to be what x lies between 10 and negative 10 and there is a solution so how am I going to translate this expression without the absolute value, the inequality? I'm going to just draw inspiration for that answer. I'm just going to say x is less than k, but x is greater than negative k. This is the translation that we are looking for. So if I see something like the special case here, this one, I'm going to immediately translate it in this form and solve it. And of course, this one has a special case. What is the special case of this one? Uh, let me just put it here. Special case. That is if absolute value of x is less than k and k is a negative number. Let me erase this part so I have enough room to work this. For example, what if I have absolute value of x is less than negative 4? Can you think of a number whose you'll take its absolute value and it's going to be less than a negative number 4? For instance, 0. Absolute value of 0 is 0. Is 0 less than negative 4? No. That's false because negative 4 on the number line is to the left of it. Remember, on the number line, the numbers increase from left to right. So 0 is to the right of negative 4. 0 is larger, not smaller. That's false. So 0 isn't going to work. What about 2? I'm looking at positive side of the number line. There you go. Here's my number line. I just picked 0. Didn't work. I'm picking 2. Is absolute value of 2 less than negative 4? absolute value of 2 is 2 is a positive number less than negative number no that's false didn't work didn't work let's choose a negative number let's choose negative 1 absolute value of negative 1 is less than negative 4 well absolute value of negative 1 is 1 is 1 now it's a positive number is it going to be a positive number less than negative number it's the same as exactly this one. No, that's also false. Therefore, regardless, it seems like no matter what I choose, this statement is false. Absolute value, the lowest it can be is zero, right? Because it's always positive. Zero is the lowest for an absolute value. So this inequality never could happen. This one has no solution. Therefore, in the more general case now, the more general case, for our special case, the answer is the null symbol. The solution set is an empty set. That can't happen. So for these, you have to be careful. And notice, by the way, we only have a single absolute value statement on the left, a single absolute value on the left. If I'm working an example where I have absolute value you know, on the same side, both sides, or whatever, we need to isolate the absolute value. And I'll show you what I mean when we do an example for these uh, to work the way they do. All right, let's take a look at our last case. Our last case is going to be, again, an absolute value inequality. And this time, let's say our absolute value is going to be absolute value of x greater than k, where k is positive. And for this one, I'm going to remember... I looked at absolute value of x greater than 10. Now let's 
do this by inspection, then I'll do generalization of this bullet that we have. Greater than 10. So here's 10. Things, that's what X is. Unknown. Numbers. Things that are greater than 10. Units. Over 10 units away from zero now. So for example, 11 works. 12 works. Anything above 10 works, doesn't it? Everything that's to the right of 10 now is a solution. There you go. So again, 10.1, that works. 10.1 is bigger than 10, all the way to infinity. On the negative side, if I look at negative 10 and look at numbers that are less than negative 10, for example, negative 15. Absolute value of negative 15, C becomes positive. And that is bigger than 10. So as long as we are over, over 10 units, then the solution will work. Okay, therefore, as you just saw, my way of looking at this inequality is that I translate, translate that as things, values, numbers that are over k units away from zero. Okay, that's that's what I'm looking at. So how am I going to write this? You know, notice the solution, by the way, we have two disjoint sets to the right and to the left of that k. So this one means, what does it mean? It means x has to be greater than, oh, <laughs> not 10, 10 was my example. Let me just put general k. x is greater, greater than k or x could be less than negative k. See, there is the negative part, the negative 10. All right. And then with that, we have the statement. Again, this is how we rewrite the expressions without the absolute value. We have to translate them depending on whether they're less than or greater than. Now, this process works if you have greater than or equal. This becomes greater than or equal. Oh, less than or equal. That's going to be greater than or equal. So whether you have equality or not doesn't change on how we process this, how, do, how we approach it. Now, what's the special case of this one? Well, let's take it out. Let's take a look at the special case. Absolute value of x greater than k, where k is now negative. So for example, suppose I have absolute value of x is greater than negative 2. Well, remember, the result of absolute value is going to be always positive, right? Zero and higher. The zero is the lowest it can be. So if I make this to be 5, is absolute value of 5 bigger than negative 2? Uh, 5 is bigger than negative 2 because a positive number is greater than a negative number. That is true. So here's my number line. 0. And so far I picked 5. It checked. Let's pick 0. Absolute value of 0 greater than negative 2. Absolute value of 0, 0 is 0 greater than negative 2. That's true. So far two numbers work. Let's pick a negative number, negative 3. Is absolute value of negative 3 greater than negative 2? Absolute value of negative 3 is 3. See, no matter what I pick, the answer to absolute value, the lowest it can be is 0. It's 0 or higher. 3 is bigger than negative 2, right? So negative 3 also worked. So it looks like no matter what I choose on the number line, right? Anything here is going to work. Therefore, the solution is going to be, in my example, all real numbers. In a general case, the same way, the solution is all real numbers. All real numbers in interval notation means negative infinity to infinity, which really means the entire number line. That's what that means. Or you can use the symbolic. The funny looking R means all real numbers. And now we have all cases here uh, figured out. So we can work these 
uh, some example of these absolute values. Okay. Let's take a look at a few of these. <clears throat> In this example, I'm going to look at the absolute value of 5 minus x, or let's go 5x. Uh, no, that's fine. We'll keep it simple. 5 minus x less than or equal to 12, right? Okay, so how's this going to work? Well, because it's less than, so we're gonna, the key is to come up here and look at which one you're working with. This is the correct one. All right. So what do I need to do? Remember, less than means within K units. Oh, very important. Let me make another one right away. 5 minus X, less than or equal negative 12. So what do we do first thing? We look at the number. If this number is negative and we have absolute value, that's the signal that we have a special case. Can absolute value of a number be less than a negative number? Uh, there you go. Special case. Can that happen? No. Absolute value is positive, so this will never happen. Therefore, this one has no solution. Now let's do the other one because that's 12. So I'm going to write 5 minus x. Remember, less than 12 means within 12 units of 0. There. So I'm just going set to set this one as a three-part inequality. Some write it as, again, a conjunction. Two inequality joined with and. This is the easiest way. Subtract 5 from all three parts. And I get negative 17 less than or equal negative x less than or equal 7. Multiply, because I have negative x, multiply by negative 1. Right? The whole thing times negative 1. Now, negative 1 times negative 17 is 17. Negative negative x is x. Negative 1 by 7 is negative 7. When we multiply or divide, remember, change the sense of inequality. So it's going to flip. These are going to flip. So what does this thing read? X is bigger than negative 7. And this one reads X is less than 17. So I'm rewriting it where the inequalities point in this direction rather than the other direction because it's easier to look at it on the number line this way again these are the same expressions they're identical but i like my inequalities go in that direction point to the left because now i can go to the number line and i can identify this is negative 7 and this is 17 and here's zero the answer is going to be in there in between see within when they were looking at the within so that's what that is and the solution in interval notation is going to be bracket square bracket negative 7 comma 17 close bracket that's this one so we look at the special case and a regular case of uh less than or equal in this case let's take a look at equality of two absolute values for instance, suppose I have absolute value of 4x minus 3 equal the absolute value of x plus 6. Okay. And <clears throat> for this one, uh, absolute value of x, absolute value of y means, remember we had a case where they're the same, same sign, or they have opposite signs inside the absolute value so i'm going to write the case where they have same sign or they could have opposite signs i made opposite the one on the right opposite doesn't matter you can make the one on the left opposite now this one i subtract first one i'm going to subtract x from both sides add three Divide by 3. X is 3. On the other side, I'm going to have 
we'll see 4x minus 3 distribute negative I get negative x minus 6 add x to both sides add 3 to both sides and let's divide by 5 there you go so we have this one there are two solutions in this one now let's check him let's check him and see what happens i would expect when i plug three i'm gonna get numbers that have same sign they both could be positive or both negative but they're gonna be exact same same numbers so here's my check i usually don't check if i'm comfortable with the solution and if i don't have to check it but this one i want to check to show you something so i'm going to go four times three minus three four times three twelve minus three is nine that's the number on the left let's look at the number on the right three plus six right i'm looking at absolute value of x plus six three plus six is nine you see that that's what we mean by them being the same they're either the same positive or either the same negative in this case it so happened they're both positive now let's check the negative three-fifths that would be interesting four times negative three-fifths minus three and negative three-fifths plus six four times negative three-fifths that's negative twelve-fifths minus three now minus three with a denominator of five isn't minus three the same as negative 15 fifth 15 divided by five is three now negative 12 minus 15 makes negative 27 fifths and we'll leave it like that notice i have a negative number again we said here the case is a case where they have their opposite in signs so let's see what happened on the other side I have negative three fifths. Uh, let me write it like this: negative three fifths plus six. That would be thirty fifths, right? Thirty divided by five is six. Now negative three plus thirty is twenty-seven fifths. Look at this one now. Aren't these opposite in sign? One is positive, one negative, and it checks because once you take absolute value, um, these will be notice these are not uh instead of saying not same i'm just going to say notice these are opposites of each other so we call them opposites they're opposites of each other and they work so this is how you do one where there's absolute value on both sides okay now <clears throat> now let's let's just take a look at a few more examples of the mixed types and we'll be done with this uh, segment of our video in this example suppose i want to do absolute value of 3x minus 1 equals 2. okay so what's inside absolute value has to be 2 or what's inside has to be negative 2. add 1 divide by uh, 3 so we get x is 1 or add 1 divided by 3 and we get that one we got our two solutions in this one negative one third comma 1 is the solution set let's do another one let's do one where we have or less than for example absolute value of 2x plus 5 less than 3. now remember the number makes a difference whether it's positive or negative for special cases this one is positive so i'm just going to go again less than here means within so i'm going to go 2x plus 5 is less than 3 and it's greater than negative 3. subtract 5 from all three parts negative 8 less than 2x less than negative 2 and divide by positive 2 remember when we divide by positive no need to change the direction so x is between negative 4 and negative 1. 
in interval notation there's negative 4 and negative 1 you can graph this and you'll see that on the graph between negative 4 and negative 1 means parentheses because there's no equal sign on inequality so we have parentheses on this one all right and it's straightforward nothing nothing uh, dramatic let's take a look at another example next to that one how about i have let's say four times x minus three and then greater than 12. before we translate before we translate the absolute value we need to isolate the absolute value isolate it so we're going to divide both sides by four now I have just the absolute value by itself greater than three. And the next step is to identify which case this one is for greater than that's uh, right in here. You see that? Remember that means over K units in both directions. So over K units in both directions, that means X minus three has to be bigger than three or x minus 3 less than and negative 3 not 3 not 3 negative 3 because this time you want to be see here's 3 there's negative 3 you want to be over and under that's why this part is under negative 3 away from 0 now let's solve them add 3 to both sides here add 3 again to both sides you get 3 minus 3 is 0. So x has to be greater than 6 or x less than 0. Here's 0. Open circle at 0. And this one is 6. Open circle at 6. Because equality doesn't have equal sign in it. Less than 0 means this. Greater than 6 means everything above that to the right of that. And because or makes either or correct, so we have a two segment solution on the number line. The left segment is from negative infinity to zero union. The, li the right segment would be six to infinity. And there you have that. The interval notation of the solution to this exercise. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, let's see. Let's do... Oh, a couple, two or three. We're at about 38 minutes, so that's not bad. And again, I'm trying to keep the videos for these to about an hour long, no more. Give or take, right? Well, let me not put the number first. So let's say for uh, this example, I want to do something like this. Let's say it's 3x plus 1 minus 1 less than 2, something like this. So before we translate this to within 2, that would be incorrect. Before we translate, and we need to isolate the absolute value. That means I need to get rid of negative 1. Let's add 1 to both sides, and it's gone. Now we can translate the word less than, remember? The symbol less than means the word within. So we're looking at within 3 units. Within 3 units of 0 means negative 3 on the left, and three on the right side. So I'm going to add one, uh, add negative one to all parts. Negative one, negative one, negative one. That makes negative four less than three x less than two. Divide by three, I get negative four thirds less than x. Divide by three makes that two thirds. And there you go. So x lies between negative four thirds and two thirds. Again, on the number line, because we're looking at within uh, those units. So here's two thirds, here's negative four thirds, everything between the interval notation. Oops, gonna be parentheses, right? Lower number on the left, higher number on the right. If you write this as two thirds, comma, negative four thirds, that would be incorrect. Remember, in interval notation, the smaller number is always on the left side. So let's just do a couple more, and, and that will be enough for this video. So this first uh, of the two, the last two we're doing for this video, 
I'm going to go absolute value 6 minus x is less than negative 11. Now remember, we always look at the number after the inequality. If it's negative, it means you have a special case. So the answer to absolute values are positive. There is no way what's in that absolute value because absolute value of anything is going to be greater than or equal to zero. So there's no way this is going to be less than negative 11. This one has no solution by inspection. So don't go translating them because it's not going to work. Okay. You've got to make sure the translation only works when you have a positive number on the other side of inequality. This one has no solution. Now, what if, what if, let's say I make that greater than, see the same thing, only I change less than to greater than. Now, by the same token, because absolute value is always positive, this will always be positive, wouldn't it? So that means the statement is going to be always true. So if it's always true, no matter what I pick for x, the solution is going to be all real numbers, isn't it? Funny looking R or negative infinity to infinity. And uh, let me do just maybe one last one here and we're done. Absolute value of 3x plus 2, let's say greater than 0. And for this one, uh, let's see, well, what do you think? Remember what's inside absolute value? It's going to be greater than or equal 0, isn't it? So, now here's a tricky one. We don't want it to be equal to 0. We want it to be greater than 0, right? So let's solve this. Set it equal to 0. 3x would be negative 2, uh, negative 2 on the other side, right? And what's the next step? The next step is to divide by 3, negative 2 thirds. So we know at negative 2 thirds, let's go to the number line. At negative 2 thirds, the expression is 0. This is negative 2 thirds. Open circle at negative 2 thirds. Here's the reference point on the number line. So only at negative 2 thirds, we get exactly 0. Any other value you pick in here, the answer is going to be greater than 0. Any number below this, absolute value of it is going to be bigger than 0. So anything works. Everything on the number line works except um, at negative two thirds. It's not going to work because you get ex precisely zero. So the interval notation for this is going to be negative infinity to negative two thirds union with negative two thirds, right? Negative two thirds to infinity. And that is our way of excluding a single point on the number line. You just go parentheses uh, before and after it. Okay. <clears throat> so we are done with this example. And I think we've, we've done a good number of exercises here. Um, so try to work out the homework problems, please, or problems similar to this. And with this one, we are done with uh, what we wanted to do, which is solve absolute value equations and inequalities. Again, thank you for watching the video.